I'm Chase. I'm Maria Jose. And this is our bus, Tio Aventura. Stands for Uncle Adventure. Uh, and in Spanish, I'm yep. from Venezuela. I moved here four years ago, almost five now. Yep. And we met and started living together and decided to buy a school bus. Yeah, I'm originally from the eastern part of Tennessee, Knoxville. Uh, she and I met when we were living in Madison, Wisconsin, both just working. Got the opportunity to come back down this way mm -hmm. um, in Nashville now. And uh, she came with me. Yeah, and then one day I went to work and I hated it and I sent her a text and said, let's buy a bus. So there were a couple of non-negotiables um, between she and I and uh, one for her was makeup. I'm sure she'll discuss that. For me, it was a hammock. I love my Eno. I've always had my Eno uh, with me where I go. Let me see if I can get it undone here. So we found these really awesome clips and then actually screwed them into the ribs of the bus. And this, just to keep it out of the way, is going to be a struggle. So we kept the mirror. Again, I like the school bus aesthetic. And it hides the hammock very, very well. This was a nice place of refuge while we were building the bus. We'd open up all the windows. I'm actually going to have to unwind it a bit. There we go. So yeah, when we were building the bus, this was a nice place of refuge. It was hot, you know. June and July in Middle Tennessee, we pop this up, drop all the windows, let the breeze come in. Here we go. So we drop all the windows. This holds the weight perfectly. It's secured right into the strongest part of this bus and just relax. So when it's not 40 degrees outside, we can lower the windows again and just, you know, chill in here. This could be slept in. You know, if we have guests and we built this bus, keeping guests in mind, our sofas, which she'll talk about, slide together, and then this would fit perfectly over top of it. So we could essentially sleep another four people in here very comfortably. So we would just set this up certain occasions. It's not always out. Um, I'm sure when the weather gets nicer, when we're going west, there'll be a lot of situations where this will be, you know, popped up. So for the, the compartment up here, this was all original. I know some of them don't have it. I was really excited to see that we do have it. I, I kept it because it's, it's a really nice space for me to put a fire extinguisher, our paperwork, and we're legal. I've got my drill, drill battery, and I have a little safe up here as well. I keep our bus receipts from our build. So there are a few other ones, but you know it's a nice reminder of the money that we spent on this, which wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be. It was a little bit more than I would have preferred. We bought the bus April 6th this year, 2018, and it's still not finished, but it's totally functional. And that took us May, June, July, August, four months. And then total cost on it, total cost was under $16,000. That includes the bus and taxes, registration, everything. So this is the living room area. We decided we have an idea of we wanted kind of separate rooms. We didn't want like one area and then we wanted to privacy. Like Chase said, we want guests to come over here. So we want them to feel like welcome. Don't feel like we're sleeping all together in the same place. Uh, so we have two sofas over here, which actually you, we can pull them together. I will probably change that make it a little bit easier to pull together so i always need chase and be like hey i need help we do have some storage but it, because it's so hard to get in there we barely put anything in there so we actually went to ikea and so so these bed frames they they had like a weird it's a slab system we have in each side on the sofa and then we can just actually like pull them out and they will just meet in the middle we actually made the cushions ourselves 
the curtains ourselves. We were gonna buy everything, but then we were like, you know what? Let's just buy a machine and try to make it ourselves. Like, it's a school bus. Let's make it as unique and ours as possible. So actually, everybody told us like, you're crazy. That's so hard. I hate sewing. And we're like, eh. now we actually love it. We bought the machine and now we're like, trying to figure it out okay how could we make this pattern over here so we made the cushions ourselves putting it inside was kind of hard but they have zippers on the side so you can wash them my dog already threw up on it so it's cleanable which is good we tried to put as many rugs on the floor we probably are gonna get some more because the floor is kind of cold and my dog slides when we're driving so it helps to keep him in place. Then we have some storage over here, which actually right now we only have like some tools and screws and things that we might need for the build. We also put up some curtains. I didn't want to see the whole cable or the kind of like the plastic that the bus original came with. So we just put some wood behind um, and cover the cables. We actually kind of like drill a hole behind it and we can just put the cables, the whole cable system. Yeah, that way, you know, it looks like a little bit like more clean. Mm -hmm. And then it's a little bit more firm as well for the curtains. Before, when we first put the curtains up, we had cables to keep them together. They didn't look the best, but they did the job until we went to Walmart and found these curtain rods for like $2. And we're like, whoop, we bought all of them and they work perfect. They don't look bad at all. And yeah, you can like move them around if you need to and put them back together really easy. Yes, we did make the curtains ourselves. I'm looking for a way to keep them. Right now I'm using just a hair tie to bring some light inside. But yeah, it was really easy. We actually bought the uh, original uh, curtain from Amazon and then we cut it and just measure about the size of our windows. And it's a uh, blackout curtains. They're blackout curtains, so it's nice to keep it nice cool inside when it's very hot outside. And then when we're sleeping, we don't have like the sun peeking through. So in our kitchen, instead of going for building, and I'll be honest, instead of building, we wanted to buy cabinets. This bus really, really, really pushed the limits of what I know about woodworking and, you know, honestly, just building anything. So we opted to get pre-built, pre-manufactured cabinets. Don't do it. Honestly, don't do it. Thank me later. Now, if you were to, you know, salvage some from Craigslist that were solid wood, absolutely. Um, the face of these was white oak. They're from Lowe's. And that's, you know, their cabinets are meant to be in a home, in something stationary not in something that you know takes bumps going down the road at 65 miles an hour so I can't say the quality is bad but the application at which I put them in was really really a bad decision so the drawers they're missing right now because they fell through but build yours you know take a few extra you know days to get it right do not buy build your cabinets but we went with an L shape we took a bunch of polls from family members people on YouTube and everyone said they wanted our refrigerator right here and what did we do? The exact opposite of what everyone said because we wanted a functional space. We wanted it to be open. We wanted, honestly, the ease of plumbing. We have the shower right behind here so we could just run both of um, our lines directly off of that. So the sink here, our cooktop here, and then we wanted a good amount of accessible and reachable, I guess, prep space, if you will. So my biggest point out of all of this is go with what's functional uh, that's what we did instead of what was popular we love it couldn't change it if i wanted to and then build your own cabinets for sure so with the refrigerator it's powered by our solar system we wanted a fully residential fridge because our intention is to uh, boondock as much as possible in very remote areas so we want enough usable food and supplies yeah. as as we possibly can this was a rated lower energy use than most of the apartment size fridges that we had looked at and it was significantly cheaper i got this on a discount while i was still working well, thank you best buy <laughs> yeah i paid like 250 bucks for this fridge um, black stainless steel it worked perfect with the design we were surprised it fit it was it was funny to see everybody from Best Buy just like pushing it through the little door, but it's in here, it's working. We took, we the, took the doors the door. off of that just so they wouldn't scratch. It fit and, perfectly. And we didn't have to load it up 
where we bought it at Best Buy, we pulled the bus up and they loaded it up for us. So that was a major benefit. And they were excited to see inside the bus. So we were like, well, if you help out, you get to see the bus. So it worked out perfect. Then we have cabinet. We bought countertop from Ikea. We went with a gray color because we already had like different color wood in the floor and we wanted to kind of keep it like more simple and neutrals. You can see inside the bus we have like very neutral colors. We don't have a lot of pop of colors just because we prefer something that it's more clean than then if we want to add color with other things, we totally can and we will not get bored of being inside of something that is just pure bright. We want to put Velcro in things, but I'm I want to finish the whole kitchen and then kind of like decide what I want to Velcro. For the moment right now everything just goes in the sink while we're driving and it's pretty easy to put away mm, for me actually the layout that we have in for the kitchen it worked out perfect i have a lot of prep space we have just a two two burner two burner two burner because it's just two of us we don't need a lot to be honest pretty much two is what we use in our house before when we had the large house we had like a four and we yeah. never use it we probably use one so that's perfect perfect size we have a bigger one in the back a smaller one in the front and it has worked perfect for us then we got the sink actually we got it at ikea and we saw it we fell in love we were like well perfect it's gonna fit amazing in there we pick it up and then we went to the damage part of ikea you know that it's like discount of 50 percent off and everything and we found it in there, so we left the good one and we took the scratch one, but it was perfectly fine. It was just a scratch because it was display, but it worked out everything. Actually, we got it in there. Yeah. This sink, this one was over there too. You know, we have the deep sink. It's really nice to store mm -hmm. while we drive, mm -hmm. but it really comes in handy to just, you know, it's the most useful thing to wash our dishes immediately after we use them yeah. and put them back up. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, as long as you're staying on top of cleaning and tidying, you don't really need a big sink, but it's nice for storage. Yeah. So you may say that. So of course we use the sink for storage when we're driving, but it's also very nice because it's deep and we get to just like clean the dishes right away and try to clean it and keep it as nice as possible because it's a smaller place. That was one of my conditions. I was like, okay, we're going to live in a school bus, but we're going to try to keep everything in place. I don't want to live in a mess and feel frustrated of being in the bus. I wanna actually enjoy being in the bus. Also, a good thing about the sink is that we have a little chihuahua that we have to give him bath and that's gonna fit perfect. So we went with the deeper sink and larger and we still have a lot of space for prep. So for the storage on the top, we put just the security to keep it close. It hasn't open at all while we're driving. You can tell we haven't eaten in the bus much yet. We bought new things. So we're still trying to figure it out where to keep everything. We have some cups and mugs in there. This area over here, we have to cut it to fit the curve in the ceiling. So we have to make sure that it was extra secure. We already have the problem over here. We didn't want everything to fall apart. So it's, it's pretty good in there, I will say. I just. I just have some storage in there of like cooking and prepping but it takes some time to actually find out like you know at, at your house you just like put it there and then you're like oh it works better here so it kind of like you have to work around to see how it will work the best this has been a big area for me to be quite honest because we have a lot to storage and the kitchen that's pretty much the largest area for storage in the kitchen area but we actually bought some dividers i will say like organizers that on amazon and we can keep all our canned food and dry food so we're still trying to figure it out that as well but we're doing our best to kind of keep everything where we need it to be so initially to fit the curvature of the bus which is insanely difficult we did something very similar to this with self-tapping screws and toggle bolts where we would pre-drill push our uh, toggle bolts through secure the wood essentially base plate if you will with the toggle bolts and then self-tap them in multiple spots then we uh, reinforced the inside of the cabinet um, with wood and then just mounted that 
directly to the face board that we made. And then after about 600 miles on the road, this started to still loosen up and wiggle a bit. So we added the secondary support down below, which we should have done from the very beginning. In hindsight, we would have preferred to, you know, just build the cabinets in to the curvature of the, the wood and, and support them or into the curvature of the roof and uh, support them this way to begin with. So in the refrigerator, we have way too much space. It could actually store most of our dishes and, and Tupperware and still have enough room for now. But I mean, we've been staying centrally localized to where some family live, so. They cook for us. <laughs> yeah, so we don't have to have a ton of that, but come January um, and just before, we're gonna need all of the space that we actually have. So that's nice. Um, I didn't mention how it is powered. So it's powered off the solar system. Um, we have 800 watts up top, that they're Renogy 100 watt monocrystalline panels. Um, we wanted mono over poly. I know there are a couple of other types of things, but uh, we went with the, the mono panels. We have 500 amp hours of batteries. Those are um, AGM. I believe they're not necessarily what we need. Um, so we're actually battery shopping uh, right now. Um, I think as painful as it's going to be um, forking out the money, lithium is gonna be the way that we're gonna wanna go. And we're, we're honestly looking at a much larger battery bank just because of our battery needs will be growing. Um, we're gonna be you know, adding some additional things. You know, we want the option to eventually run air, even if it's for an hour or two a day, but we don't, you know, we don't have any of that installed because of the climate um, and the temperatures that, that we're in right now. And then that's all powered um, from, D, uh, from DC to AC through the walls with a 4,000 watt Ames power inverter. With the wood stove, this was something that I absolutely, I, I had to have. She, I don't know, was as interested in it as I was. At the beginning, now I love it. But I wanted it for two reasons. Wood heat, I grew up with a wood stove in my house and it was one of my fondest memories growing up, sitting by the fire, the dog sitting by the fire. But two, I wanted it because, I mean, it's a natural heat source. Uh, you can go out and chop some wood. You can buy ricks and bundles of wood. And, you know, aesthetically, this thing is beautiful. It fits the space perfectly. So those were really the, the reasons that I wanted it. Implementing it in a school bus is a lot more difficult than, you know, just the concept in your head. So um, the first was finding stovepipe that's three inches that isn't stainless or single wall um, because you are going through the roof. You do have some insulation up here, um, some combustible materials. But um, once we figured that out, it was how do we how do we actually get it? How do we you know get it into place and and get it working? So. Um, I did it all in about four hours yeah. when I actually set out to install it. So I went to Lowe's and I got this 15 and a half by 15 and a half inch um, paver, used a masonry bit to drill down through it, and then put bolts from uh, actual carriage bolts through the bottom and tighten the wood stove down to the block first. Moved it in, I had already cut my hole and I used a six inch hole saw, that thing was insane um, good luck finding them and you know when you do i'm sorry for your wallet we were in wisconsin when we found finally found all the stuff we couldn't find anything in tennessee for it i mean you know for a small wood stove at least but uh, then we secured the block down um, with just actual screws through the floor so it won't move and then uh, built a little trim piece to go around and hide the the screws but um I'm absolutely in love with the wood stove. A lot of people complain that the burning time is not extremely long on them, but what I found is if you use really, really nice hard woods, you can maximize your burn times. Large, large chunks. We cut all of our wood in probably six and a half inch chunks, and we can fit a few of them, probably three chunks in there, and that'll burn for four and a half, five hours on a really, really, really nice hard wood. The dogs love it. The dogs love it, I love it. You can feel right here the heat coming off of it and we have the front door wide open on the bus and it's in the 40s today. So the only thing is when you go with a, a small wood stove like this, you do need to get the radiant heat fan to push the air you know, in the direction that you want. Otherwise, you are gonna have a hot spot here. And for our layout, it's difficult to get the air back but it does over time mm -hmm. fill up the entire bus um, with heat. She was recording a video. She'd make up videos and it was 24 degrees outside. 
Um, this was earlier last week. Yeah. We had snow, which is odd for us. It was about 20, 24, yeah. 26 degrees outside. And in here, we were having to remove our coats. It was hot. It was really hot. Um, our UPS guy has come in when he's delivering packages and we've had this running. And um, he even made comment on, on how warm it was. So I, I would say we're able to get, and, and we do have the walls insulated, uh, we're able to get a good 35 to 40 degree difference from outside to inside. It depends on how hot we let it burn, you know, if we have all of our curtains down. We do try and use as much passive solar as we possibly can to help heat, you know, and then on the cool side, we'll leave the curtains drawn. So we're blocking the cool from coming in. Which also we left the heaters, yeah. the regional heaters from the bus. Yeah. We let them, there's one over here, one in the back, and then you have one over there, right? Yeah. So um, we inspected all of the lines very, very well before then, because I know there are some issues where they'll spring a leak and then, you know, you've got a lot of trouble there. But um, we liked the fact that if we were on a serious pool and the bus is, you know, creeping up in temperature, we could flip the heaters on and circulate the coolant even further back. So when we're driving, we just flip on um, the heaters. We have a right front. I have one underneath the seat and then we have one at this wall actually below the cabinet, mm -hmm. but it's not inside the cabinet and it vents up, up the wall and out and into the bathroom. The bathroom will get very, very toasty while we're driving if we have that heater on. And then we have one that actually vents out in the back in two different ways. So it keeps that back area warm as well. But um, that's only when we're driving. Um, this thing produces enough heat. I wouldn't say it produces too much heat. Um, and I can see where for some people, this might not be enough. If we had moved it any further forward, we would have an issue keeping the bus warm. If we had moved it any further back, we would probably get way too hot in the bedroom. This is a nice open area for it. So it heats up this area very, very well. And then with a fan, it pushes heat back super, super nice. It doesn't fold up right here. We actually have the table mounted on the wall. It comes off the wall and then it has hairpin legs that you can open up and that sits perfectly in between our two sofas okay, here. So now we're here in the bedroom area, our area where we spend most of the time pretty much. It's yeah. really comfortable back here. That was a big point for us. We wanted to enjoy being in the bus. So we went with our queen size bed. From home. From home. Yes, it's very comfortable. We got everything on top from pretty much everywhere. Some things from Amazon, some things from uh, the world market. World market, yep. We love that store. Then we have the wall which divides the living area to the garage, which Chase is going to take you there in a moment and show you. But then we have some storage on the top as well, where pretty much want to build two more because it's a long area. And for me, it's kind of hard to just open the one in the middle, kind of like crawl around and try to grab everything in there. We don't have a lot of things in there right now. Just our sewing machine and like sewing things, but that's pretty much everything we have right there. Then for me, how Chase said that there was some things for him that he actually need to keep in the boss. For me, it was my makeup area because I do makeup tutorials. So I didn't want to get rid of anything. Also I freelance, I do makeup freelancing so it's going to be more like freelancing and doing makeup on the road. So this was the area that I wanted to actually keep because I was not going to give it away. It's part of my job as well. So I love how it looks. It actually fits perfectly with the room. I get a pretty good space to actually record and it looks good. I don't know. We got everything from here from Ikea as well. So some storage not the best they're already broken like this is a mess so it's already broke in the middle and how chase said it's actually made to be in a home you know in a school bus which is moving and full of makeup and just like sometimes my drawers just like explode and go everywhere so we're trying to find a way to actually keep them closed while we're driving but we have it kind of figured out right now then we actually have this little area over here which is more for like the TV area. Chase loved to play video games. So finding a place to storage all his game and his PlayStation was important. We actually found that in T 
TJ Maxx yep. and it looks really cool. So we just mount it there and it's stable. For the TV, we actually want to mount it kind of like a corner because right now it's kind of like in the middle. But yeah, right now it's just there, but we actually eventually want to just mount it in the corner of the... I hit my shoulder on it pretty regularly yeah. and other people who come into the bus do as well yeah <laughs> and every single time it happens i get mad i'm it. like i told you i want to get in the corner yeah. so it's coming what about underneath the bed yeah so it, it was it was really vital for us to still have um space I and mean, we went from a very large house for us for two people yeah. to an area that's functional every way that we need but we you know it's important that we still keep the things that feel like home and that can, you know, keep our passions and our hobbies alive. Like I have my didgeridoo, I have my guitar on the wall. She has her makeup space. She let me keep a PlayStation. Not that I use it here, but you know, and then to still have a lot of storage was super important to us as well. So we actually in a small space have more storage than what we really need as of right now, which is kind of cool. But that's only because when we decided to go small, we truly committed a hundred percent to that. For reference, we had large walk-in closets and we had essentially walk-in closets in every room. Every room was fully furnished with dressers and drawers and... Every single closet was full of clothes. Was completely full with clothes and shoes. Every drawer was filled with clothes. My clothes in guest rooms, her clothes in the walk-ins. And we downsized to where we could add things to our wardrobes now in this small space. But still, we're trying to keep it a little bit more responsible. For every single item we buy, we have to give to away. So it makes you think like, do I truly want it? Is there something that I don't like as much? So we're trying to keep it more balanced and actually keep in what we truly need. And we did the one in, two out because eventually we would go zero. and. You know, we're blessed to have everything that we've ever needed in life. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have at this point still more clothes than what I need. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of taking shopping as a hobby, if I really need a nice winter coat because we're somewhere that, you know, something isn't keeping us warm, I can go and get one now. But I don't have one because I don't need it yet. The other thing with the storage, I'll show you here. We have the bed on struts. Do you need help? No, I get it. with our 100 gallon water tank in the back. It fit perfectly in the space. It's nice because, you know, it's it's got all of the things around it as well as, you know, the bus being heated, you know, to keep it from potentially freezing. And then we have a ton of extra, you know, decorative pillows, a tabletop oven as well, since we only went with the cooktop and then just some other storage. Things that we don't use as often. So that's why they're underneath the bed but it's nice to have that space. And it's on struts that help us lift it, but don't keep it up. And now for the storage, we went with closets on the side for the hallway. Eventually it was gonna be a washer and dryer. It was going to be a washer and dryer area, but we decided that we prefer to keep it for storage for right now. We truly prefer to just like park somewhere and go and wash clothes. We're not gonna be able to use it if we were not connected or like the whole process, so why to just have it, you know? With the closets, we actually build it ourselves, of course, like pretty much everything else. It was a little bit of issue because they will open when we were driving and if we put the locks, the other type of locks, they will open anyway. So we went with this one instead, which you just turn it and then you can just open really easy. That's the other issue with this one, that you have to open all of the closets to be able to open that one we fit pretty much that's all chase's clothes over here we just have like some extra jackets and we put our tripod and camera equipment the other side it's mine and i keep some shoes on the bottom and also my clothes and that's pretty much everything that i own right now so it was really helpful because they don't look Wompy, I will, I will say that they don't take a lot of space and we are able to fit a lot of things in them. And they have worked perfect. We were gonna paint it eventually. We were gonna do white, but then we were like, mm, that's pretty much a lot of white. white. So we went with a stain, weather oak, and we loved it. It actually looks rustic, kind of. I said I didn't want a rustic look, but 
eventually I kind of like it because it brings out some of the colors from the actual wood, some greens and blue and gray. I really like it because it kind of goes with the floor as well. Over here, we were going to have some other closet area, but it was too tiny for it. So we're probably just going to build some shelves and just have like a shoe rack or to be able to put small things for storage. And that's pretty much everything for our closet area. This is our bathroom. We have a lot of space for it to be in a school bus and we designed it that way in particular. On the opposite side of this wall is a hall and the hall for some people may be a little narrow. Um, I don't rub on either side and that's perfect. I don't hit my head and I don't necessarily have to duck much, but that was a sacrifice for us to have our own personal sanctuary. You know, wake up, shower, you know, shower before bed. We wanted something that we can move around in and we wanted it to be beautiful. So we tiled the shower with marble and subway tiles and we found the shower pan at kind of a salvage yard. It sounds odd. Um, there's this very eccentric man in middle Tennessee named Tink. He has hundreds of acres filled with salvage products um, that he buys bulk trucks full of from Lowe's and Home Depot and um, contractors and things like that. So we picked our shower pan up for about, was it $35? Which the next closest one that we could find was about 140 of this size. The shower rod we made our, or the shower curtain rod we made ourselves with a pipe bender and some pipe. And uh, it's only fixed on, you know, two points of the roof. And it wiggles if you move it, but that's just the metal of the roof, you know, the metal sheeting of the roof that bends, but uh, it hasn't fallen off very secure for what it is. And yeah, so we just dedicated a lot of space to the bathroom because uh, this is this is a really good place for us to relax and unwind. We want it to be functional, we want it to be beautiful and comfortable. The downside to this would be our flooring. And we haven't spoken about the flooring yet. It's beautiful, it was, relatively inexpensive. And I think I was in a mindset reflooring a home rather than reflooring 250 square foot of school bus um, when I went to purchase it. And you know, I had sticker shock, a lot of things. So I ended up going with a cheaper uh, wood laminate. I shouldn't have done that. We had a little air conditioner that we used and just a little bit of moisture got on the floor and actually started to bubble it. So we didn't know that it was there. So we didn't have the opportunity to wipe it up. Knowing that this area is exposed to moisture, we do, you know, we, we can and do wipe it. So that's not a problem yet. I do think at some point I will be redoing the floor probably with like a life proof vinyl. So my tip would be learn from my mistake and do something that uh, may cost a little bit more, but keep in mind at most, you know, you're, you're doing 250, 260 square feet of flooring, but uh, it'll pay off in the long run. So everything in here runs off of our 100 gallon water tank. We wanted to keep the speakers in the bus. So all of the original speakers so we can listen to music while we shower um, or while we're in bed. And then we got um, a really small, small space bathroom vanity from Lowe's and it works perfect. Actually, we haven't had any complaints out of it. Like we had, you know, the kitchen cabinets and some stuff like that. So there we have, uh, I believe this is an aqua flush um, RV toilet and it's super comfortable. It works very well. I've, I've seen a lot of videos where people go the route of composting toilets because they don't want to deal with gray or black water tanks or black water tanks in particular. Um, I grew up camping and um, if there was anyone who had the, uh, the bad end of the deal who you know was helping flush the black tank, it was me. And it's really not that difficult and it's not that cumbersome of a task. So for us, you know, we could have gone the route of composting, but we chose to do a black water tank just because I was one, unfamiliar with composting. Two, we had heard some horror stories of people cleaning the composting toilet. Um, I'm sure if I researched, I could find both positive and negative things about it, but uh, we will be splitting some of our time up between state parks and campgrounds and things like that. We'll, that'll have dump stations. And there are a lot of uh, travel centers that have dump stations for RVs as well. So our black water tank is almost 60 gallons. Our gray water tank is 55. So with that and everything vented, uh, we have no smell in here and we have a lot of you know potential time to poo. That, that's the reason why, and, and she doesn't have to worry about flushing the tanks. I don't mind to do it, but I, I think it gave us a little bit more flexibility, less maintenance, 
it's easy to clean. You mm -hmm. dump it, set it, forget it, never really have to deal with it much. So that's the reason why we went with that. We've got a little bit of towel storage over here. At some point in the future, I will probably build a small uh, little cabinet above the toilet, um, but it will have to be small just for some extra storage because I'm sure the longer into this journey and lifestyle that we get, we will need a few more places to store things. I frosted out the window, but then we also added um, the curtains. This was just a cheap film and it, it looks a little bubbly on the inside, but you can't tell at all. And I wanted that because it's the bathroom. We need privacy in here, but I didn't want to put something that was gonna block light out because you know natural light is super important. Um, and it's really nice to have. So we frosted the windows so you can't see in, but you know, you can still see out. And then we can always drop the windows if we're in an area by ourselves and we want to catch some views um, while we're, you know, doing our stuff. We got a really small little trash can here for the bathroom as well. We don't, even in our house that was as large as it was, we didn't really have much trash. I, I can't say we didn't have a huge footprint, but some people can fill up a trash can in a few days and it would take us several weeks to completely fill our one garbage can up. So we don't need a ton of stuff there, so. So one of the first things that you see when you come into the bus, aside from the staircase, is this little corner shelf that we store things like my Game Boy Color. I think I have Pokemon or Tony Hawk in there. You know, we've got a little bows, some candles, Polaroid, and books. This was really gonna be wasted space if I didn't find a solution for it. And, and I wanted to, you know, keep some of the books that I enjoy reading and rereading, and then a place to also, you know, introduce some new ones there. So it took me about an hour and a half to build this, a few adjustments, and then secured it to the side of the, uh, the sofa. And I think it just works out perfectly. Little shelf space up here, a place that we can secure our lamp to, and then kind of like a, not really a collect all, but a, a spot for, you know, some electronics and headphones and things and some books. So. We like it. It's uh, maybe not the best use of the space, but we can take those off here on the uh, on the weather mat. So that I I probably wouldn't change. We've got I don't even really know what you'd call it a single piston lock. I, I'm not sure, but uh, we have it secured through both doors, and really you can just close it. It's locked. You're not getting in once we close the uh, the actual regulator there, the air regulator for the doors. And then from the exterior, we've got our keyhole, just a standard key lock, unique to the school bus or this tiny home, if you will. But uh, we wanted something that we could secure it. You know, it may not be the absolute most secure thing. And, and we're always thinking of ways that we can improve the security functionality and the reliability of everything on this bus but we've not had anyone really try and break in yet and i wanted to do that i actually that was one of the first things that i secured on the bus after we bought it in april because we uh, we had it stored at a storage facility that we were driving to driving the bus over because i couldn't keep it in our in our neighborhood because of the hoa but i noticed that some kids near the, the storage facility had gotten into the school bus and were messing with the adjustments. The, the lights and the uh, interior, exterior speakers. And so that was something that we, we added fairly quickly. But it was like a 20 or $25 lock that, that we bought. You can get them at Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, and then you just have to drill through the metal. The only thing is uh, with the bifold doors, going down at highway speeds, they will flap a little bit. So it's a little noisy there, but uh, keeping it locked and the, uh, the air regulator closed for the doors, it won't fly open. That's a tough one, really. So the paint scheme for the bus, we wanted to do Henry's Tropical up top. So we did that first thing. It was a noticeable difference in the, the Tennessee summers as far as immediate heat or radiant heat that you can feel coming through the roof. So we knew white on top all the way around. That was amazing. Suggest anyone building a bus Bus or even a van if, if you're renovating a camper uh, most of those are white tops anyway go and get you a, you know depending on the size of your vehicle a five gallon tub of Henry's Tropical and take a day to slather that marshmallow all over it um, 
but I wanted green. I wasn't quite sure what color green I wanted to do. And she was really into the teal colors of the buses, but we wanted something that we hadn't necessarily seen on a lot of builds and bus builds are extremely popular right now. And we wanted something that was durable. So we consulted some experts at Sherwin Williams and uh, they got us um, over to uh, an industrial oil-based enamel that they said would hold up to anything that we needed going down the road in different terrains. And we spent, we actually spent a few weeks looking at colors for the bus and we ran into one particular shade called Cascade Green and fell in love with it. So we bought five gallons of it and instead of rolling the paint on, we were pouring it into a Wagner sprayer bucket and we prepped for about a week and a half on the bus and sprayed the entire bus in a matter of about 90 minutes to the finish that it is now. And it's, I mean, it's dirty. Uh, we've been traveling in the bus. This is, you know, the way that the bus looks, but uh, we had all the windows taped off. My mother helped actually tape off windows because she loves the paint prep part. It was po quite possibly the rainiest, or not necessarily the rainiest, but the windiest day that we had seen working on the bus. And we, we got it done, but we love it. It blends in with the environment. Uh, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, but it is unique going down the road. You know it's not a school bus, well, anymore a school bus. You know it's not a prison bus, and uh, we, we like it. We like that it pops with the, the little white accents that we've got going down the side. On the inside of the bus, we kept, like I mentioned, we kept all of the original bus speakers, and we kept the stuff up at the front as well that I guess the original head unit for the bus had a little microphone wired to a megaphone outside. So I guess bus drivers could yell out routes or tell kids to watch out or whatever on the bus. So I wanted a spot where if we were, if we were parked somewhere like here, and we were sitting outside or around a campfire and we wanted to listen to some music, we could just flip that toggle switch to the exterior and have some music out here. So I got marine grade speakers, opened the holes for them. And they're inexpensive, I think like $10 a speaker. And I mounted some exterior speakers underneath as well and then just wired everything to the external route. So they sound phenomenal. We could have a, a rave out here outside. Not that I would want to, but we could. But then we can also dial it down to where it's not, it's not rude to, to people who may be camping around us. You know, we like to keep that in mind everywhere we're going. But it's nice. It's really nice to have and, and they're cool. This bus came with two really large underbase storage areas. It, I would have loved to have four of them. Some of the buses have them in the rear and the other side. I absolutely couldn't have gotten a bus that didn't have the storage. If I had gotten a bus that didn't have the storage, I would have learned a lot about welding because I would have had to put storage um, underneath it. These work out super well. We actually have some leftover space right now. That's probably going to end up being firewood, seasoned firewood for the wood stove. But we store our propane tanks down there. We store some tools, some bus fluids, because anything diesel, you know, you never know what you might run into. And something that's 14 years old as well, you, you never know what you might run into. So the back is solar batteries right now, charge controllers, and then the front here is propane tanks and tools. I think this is an Atwood. I think it's an Atwood. Six gallon um, hot water heater. I, I won't lie, this has been kind of a pain point for us right now. I don't know many people who like cold showers, but we're having a really difficult time keeping this thing operating. I don't know if it's from a wiring standpoint or what, but it's been difficult. Um, this works both off of LP. We have it LP converted and it'll run on electric as well. So if we're like plugged in somewhere, but uh, it's not, it's not worthy of its price tag quite yet. I think if I had to do it over, I would, um, I would go with the tankless, which I see a lot of buses do. And at this point I can kind of understand why, but maybe over the journey, it'll change my mind. Um, but right now I'm not keen on it. And here's our dirty garage area again. We drive the bus, it's gonna get dirty. We still have some leftover oil residue from when we sprung a leak, but I have the lock taken off already um, just for this, but we have a big master lock here. You see them on a lot of buses. Um, they're fairly common. I, I love them. I think I would be hard pressed to see someone break into it, which I'm sure it can be done, but we just keep it locked while we're going. And then we store just a little bit of everything back here. I've got our breaker box, our transfer switch, which 
we really didn't even need one, but we just went that route because a lot of people that, that we had done some research um, on did that with their bus. But uh, this is our 4,000 watt Ames power inverter. I didn't know much about anything and I still don't know much about anything solar related, but I know Ames is a very reputable brand. Um, that and I think MagnaSign were the only two that, uh, that I felt comfortable going with. And so far it, it's been running flawlessly for us. We did it all with the help of my father. He, uh, he helped, my brother helped some, uh, with some stuff, and then I just ordered all the parts together, figured out how to, how to wire it, and, and did it, and it worked. We hadn't caught the bus on fire yet, but we do have the fire extinguisher uh, you know, on hand if, if we do. The garage area in the back was something that we had planned initially. I actually had planned it to be a little bit larger, but then when we were taping everything out, we didn't think we would need much space. I would say if you're gonna build a garage area and you want the space, commit to the space. I ended up taking about eight or nine inches away from this, which would have been, I think, extremely useful for you know the times that we need to get up and reach certain things. But we definitely planned for it. I planned for it to be a little bit larger, but then we uh, second guessed that decision and minimized it a little bit. But it still works out very well for us. So, I, so far, I've kept some wood back here, got Sub-Zero, a uh, sleeping bag, a ready bag for anyone who's still a prepper. Um, I, I have that, but now I just drive around with my home, so that's cool. Some rock climbing gear, little Coleman uh, grill, so, you know, if we want to grill out back there. And it's unfinished right now, but then again, I don't know. I don't know if there's really much reason for me to, uh, to finish it in. It's just an extra expense at this point. The only other thing that we really, really want to do back here is put same transparent film or the semi-opaque or opaque film on the back just so it'll kind of help keep prying eyes out of the back of it while we're on the road. Yeah, help keep them honest. So this was, this was not a cheap piece of equipment. And, you know, some other things back here aren't necessarily cheap pieces of equipment either. But I think once we have that, you know, that blocked off, it doesn't matter if we finish it in. You know, I can just keep hanging things. That happened after uh, my company sent around redundancy plans. And instead of letting it take a negative effect on our life, we saw it as kind of a freedom and opportunity. And we fixed the little things that needed fixed up on the house, listed it, yeah. and took off. We, uh, our first trip got cut short because uh, we got an offer on the house and we went ahead and accepted it. So we had to come back to the area to close. We've been here now for, I guess the last three or four weeks. Yeah. We're gonna hang out around Nashville for the next few weeks. We have Christmas in Wisconsin mm -hmm. and then January 1st, actually it may be before then. Yeah. It may be before the new year, we're gonna be taking off through the Southwest. We're gonna go through Texas and Arizona, you know, all the fun spots there, try and chase good weather until spring, yeah. um, head up the coast and then uh, Pacific Northwest once it gets a little bit nicer out. Probably, I will say that we're gonna drive and just enjoy the ride for the moment and probably find a place where we actually absolutely love it and find land and probably park and build our own house. So we were talking about it the other day, and um, I think living in the bus, at least since we have been, one year, perfectly fine. Yeah. Three years, even better. Um, I think <laughs> five years is probably our max, and we may go through a few changes over, over that amount of time. But five years, I think that's what we decided would give us enough time to find land, buy, and build. But we have no plans of getting rid of Tio anytime soon. So Unless you want to yeah. buy for like $60,000. <laughs> it all happened very quickly. We had been watching several other bus builds on YouTube. My family, my dad actually got us turned on to the idea, which was kind of funny. But uh, we had been looking and we wanted something larger because we had certain space requirements that we wanted. Now having a large bus, I think we could actually go a little bit smaller, be a little easier to, uh, to park and travel with. But um, we were looking in a certain price range below $4,000. You know, some buses that we had seen were gas, like engines, and we didn't want that. We wanted diesel. And then this one popped up fresh off of its route at uh, Nashville Metro. So, and, and I can tell you, we wanted that because they don't run the buses during the winter. So there's no salt, no anything like that. Any chance of snow, school's called off, so they don't run. And this was a zero rust bus, which was fabulous. Front engine just so happened to be, I think now I would much rather have a pusher 
because they're a lot quieter. But this, we can still hold a conversation. It's, it's not so bad that we can't hear each other, but it's a Caterpillar 3126 with the Huey. Some people love it, some people hate it. So far, so far it's working really well for us. We both really love the school bus aesthetic, so uh, we opted not to, not to change this. It was functional. It's not the prettiest, it's a school bus, and we're living in a school bus. There's no real reason to mask that in its entirety, but I wanted a flat front because we wanted the extra space. The MVP Thomas has an awesome you know, range of view uh, that you can see. So I think that all kind of went into us finding this bus. It was local. Um, it had been serviced up until six weeks before we bought it, and they only, uh, they only got rid of it because the safety requirements change every 14 years in the state of Tennessee on school buses. But um, I wouldn't change the flat front for anything. I love it. I rode you know, this type of bus to school when I was a kid and I always enjoyed it, and now I'm living in one, which is kind of cool, but um, everything works. They didn't pull anything except for the uh, the cameras off when uh, when we bought it, which is kind of cool. And you can still use the toggle switch over here to open and close the doors. It had under 200,000 miles when we bought it. it has 204,000 on it now, just about. And we put all of those on it in our first trip, 17 states and close to 4,000 miles. But uh, we're getting about nine miles per gallon diesel right now. We did get the six gear Allison transmission approved for an unlock. So we're expecting another probably one or two mile uh, increase, which is huge. We have a hundred gallon fuel tank. We were averaging that from here to Madison, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin to Camden, Maine and Camden, Maine back. It's been awesome. We ran into one issue with the Huey pump. It blew a seal and we just purged oil all over Northern Indiana and Freightliner fixed it. They didn't fix it just right. Um, they didn't replace the O-ring, they just tightened it. And so we lost oil for the remaining 3,300 miles until we figured out we were still, you know, purging oil from the same spot. But it has air brakes. We wanted that. It's automatic. I know some old, old, old buses are manuals. It's, it's great. You know, we're, we're rolling right now locked into fifth at 65 miles an hour as a top speed. I know some buses are maxing or governed at 55. Um, thankfully, we're not. And we don't really care about additional speed. 65 is, is great. Out west, 70 will be nice once I get six gear unlocked. We actually haven't installed the backup part of it. It's a four camera system and I've got them both on the sides. And I wanted that just as a security measure while I was driving down the road, getting used to driving this. You don't have to have a CDL in Tennessee when it's converted to an RV. So they're functional. I wouldn't say they're the best. We did get those online. It was like a kit for 200 some odd dollars with all four cameras and the receiver or the monitor. The monitor is awful. The color, is way out of whack so typically i just keep it in black and white instead of seeing you know green roads and purple trees but it is nice to be able to see both sides of the bus you know we do still have the six mirrors up front and they they're great but uh the backup camera it's wired and it's ready we just have to actually mount it to the back and that will be very useful with 40 feet of bus here i think the biggest part of driving this bus was the initial fear that it's you know a 21,000 pound vehicle and you're driving it you know in Nashville traffic for us but uh, after about the first 50 miles on the bus it felt like driving a normal car to the point where when we get in a normal car in her Honda or my Jeep it feels very strange but the I don't know if it's the flat you know the flat nose buses it's very easy to drive because it's very easy to see where you're at once you get used to you know hovering over the front wheels guys we really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video um, we hope you enjoyed our bus as much as we enjoy our bus there are several avenues that you can keep up with our travels because um, we are going full-time we are full-time we've sold our house our instagram is tio aventura bus that's tio aventura bus it's easier if you just yeah, down below. everything will be down below. <laughs> We're on YouTube and Instagram. So as well, everything will be linked down below. Both of our uh, accounts and Tio Ventura YouTube channel and Instagram account. Goes without saying, if you want to see makeup on the road, oh um, she does full-time freelancing and uh, tutorials um, both on YouTube and Instagram primarily Instagram at this point um, yeah. but you can keep up uh, keep up with her how uh, I make it happen in here and that link will be down below as well